Fitting a new set of handlebars and a stem to your bike is a great way to improve the control and handling characteristics of your bike. Uh, perhaps your bike had a stem that was too long or some handlebars were too narrow, in which case it's nice to jump up to something that feels a bit nicer. Now, there are a few things you do need to pay attention to that aren't immediately obvious, but it's a pretty simple process as long as you follow the steps. Here's how you do it. Okay, so you don't really need much in a way specialist tooling to do this. You'll need a selection of Allen keys that will suit your bike. Uh, in my case, for my brake levers, I need a four millimeter. For my dropper post remote, I need a three millimeter. The stem itself has four mil bolts all round. Top cap is a five. And there's a few more specialist things you might want to use. Now, if you're using a carbon bar, for example, I can't recommend highly enough using a torque wrench of some kind. Now, there's a couple of options available to you. The standard style torque wrench obviously come in different lengths for different amounts of torque are probably the most useful, but let's face it, not everyone has a requirement to have one of these at home because uh, you need a lot of bits to use these, so they can be quite pricey. If that's the case and you just want to maintain your bike and look after the bare minimum with a torque wrench, consider something like this. This is the ATD, I think this one's the second model, the 1.2 from Park. It's got adjustable torque settings on here and it's got hidden bits in the handle. Uh, more importantly, it's basically perfect for your cockpit on the bike. So that's really the most important place to be using the torque wrench on your bike because of the fact that the carbon bar, you could crack it accidentally, you could over tighten it or worse, you could under tighten it and the things come loose. So treat that as a safety item. So if you're putting a carbon bar on your bike, I definitely try and get hold of some kind of torque wrench. You'll probably want a tape measure. Uh, most people have one of these lying around just to make sure your controls are all even, evenly spaced. If you're really picky, you can download apps on your phone, like an inclinometer, basically to check the angle of your brake levers, but uh, most people do it by eye. And there's a few other cool things as well. So you'll need some grease to put on the bolts on your stem because not all stems come with grease on the actual stem bolts. Uh, and of course, by putting grease on those stem bolts, you can guarantee that by using the torque wrench, you'll get a good reading on there. And if you're using a carbon bar, you probably want some carbon compound. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, it's essentially a grease and it has floating particles in there to help add a bit of traction to it. So it basically means that you won't accidentally over torque your stem in order to stop the bars moving. Uh, it's a safety item as well, and it's really good stuff to have. Now it's called carbon gripper, but you can use this on alloy bars as well. And actually it's something I recommend using on the interface between your handlebars and your stem, because here and there, that is something on your bike that can be known to creak and that stuff will stop it. And one more tool, you might notice I've got this really old metal file here. I'll tell you why when we get to using it. Okay, so there are a few different options when it comes to the order of actually doing this. So the first one is you can install the stem onto the steerage tube first, then you can install the handlebar, and then you can install your controls. But this might be a problem if, like me, you've trimmed down your actual your brake lines and your gear cables and so forth, because you might not be able to get them onto the handlebars even if you swivel them around. So what I'm gonna do is actually install my controls onto the handlebars first. I'm gonna put the stem on, bars into the stem, and tighten everything up. Uh, like I said, there's a few different ways of doing it. Nothing is the correct way. Okay, so first things first, bit of preparation. Now you can see here, I've already removed my old bars and stem from the bike. Now before you do yours, you might wanna measure where you've got your current controls. It might be the, the ideal place to have your brake levers and stuff. Uh, if that's the case, it's always nice to get them straight on in the optimized position. In this case, I'm not doing that, but you do need to do some other preparation. Now, firstly, have a feel of the steerer tube itself. So this is the part of the fork that the stem slides onto. Make sure there's no burrs or anything on the top here. Uh, if you had a stem on the bike that was quite tricky to remove, more than likely there would be a burr here from when this was trimmed down, whether it happened at the factory, the bike shop, or perhaps something you did yourself. Uh, make sure that's nice and smooth. If it does need filing, you can do it on the bike, but I'd recommend putting something protective around to catch those metal filings because you don't want them anywhere near moving parts, bearings, things like that, especially not telescopic suspension forks. Uh, the best thing really would be to remove that, but uh, that's almost a separate video, so we're not gonna go into that right now. The next thing is preparation of the stem itself. Now, firstly, I'll do this on all new stems is I remove all of the bolts. Now, depending on where you get your stem, some of them will come with grease on them, and sometimes I don't. I like to check and put a small amount of grease on a thread of each bolt. That means that I'm gonna be able to tighten them all correctly to the correct torque, and it'll be nice and even. If you're trying to tighten a bolt with really dry threads on there, it can be very inaccurate, and it can also lead to creaking. So that's just a good habit to get into with any bolts on the bike, to be fair. And then we're gonna have a look at the actual stem clamp itself. 
Now, depending on what brand of stem you have, you might have bought a secondhand stem, you might have a new fancy stem like this one, it's still worth checking the edges of the actual clamp itself. And what I mean by that is, depending on how your stem is made, it might have very sharp edges on them. And if you're gonna be fitting a carbon bar to the, the bike, you wanna make sure those sharp edges have no chance of sort of leaving a scar on the bar because if there's any minute movement of the handlebar, we're talking like, you know, fractions of a millimeter here, that in turn can lead to pressure on the bar and that can lead to failure in certain extreme examples. So just check. Now you'll see that most stems like this one here, if you look very close up, it's actually got a very slightly chamfered edge on that uh, to avoid that exact scenario. But some stems, you might need to just take the file to just to make sure it's nice and smooth here around the edge. Just think, if you're clamping down and it's got like a little bit of a ridge on the edge and you're clamping that onto the bar, ultimately that can form a weak point. Uh, now luckily you don't need to do this on all stems and barely any stems at all, but it's definitely worth checking. And the last thing you wanna do just before putting the stem in place on your steerer tube is checking the stack height. So that is the actual physical height of the stem against your steerer tube. Now when you have things correct, you need to have a three millimeter gap visible between the top of the stem and where the steerer tube sits on the inside. Uh, it needs to be three millimeters because the fact that when you compress everything together by using the top, top nut on there, it compresses the slack in the system to make sure there's no play. If you don't have that gap there and it's flush against the top, you're essentially gonna have a loose headset. If you have any more than three millimeters, it can be a safety hazard. So three mil is a general rule of thumb. The greater your stem is, the more leeway you have. But this stem, it has a very low stack height, so I certainly wouldn't want any more than four millimeters gone and absolutely most definitely not below the level of that bolt because you're just asking for trouble because the whole thing could be in danger of shearing off. So make sure for safety's sake you get this bit right. So I'm just going to offer mine up. I can actually see that I'll need a couple of spaces at least. So I'm going to gamble here with a 10 and a 5 um, and we're just going to see where we sit with that. Now it's always good to try this with your top cap on here because as it takes up the slack in the system, this gap at the top will actually change. So that looks pretty close. I'm just gonna adjust my top cap just to see. So this one uses a five millimeter Allen key. And don't forget the job of this top cap is purely to adjust the play in the system. It doesn't adjust the bearings. It just takes up any slack that's in there. And the two at the back here are the ones that clamp the stem in place. So you'd always adjust your headset first with this one, and then you would adjust the ones at the back until they're tight. Like I said, this one is just to make sure that I've got, you need to check there's free movement and it's nice and tight. So I'm gonna remove that now that I've taken up that slack and just inspect where I am. Okay, so it looks now, with it adjusted, there's a two millimeter gap. So it probably was perfect to start with. So I'm happy with that. And I'm actually gonna leave that in place. Uh, I'm not gonna tighten up the clamp bolts just yet because I'll wait until everything is in place and then you can line it up and make sure it's straight. This though can go back in place now that I know that's okay. But like I said, make sure you're looking for about a three millimeter gap. Effectively, the smallest gap you can have possible whilst allowing your headset to be able to adjust correctly. Never over tighten the bearings either because you can damage those. Uh, it just needs to be just tight enough to make sure there's no additional movement. It needs to move freely side to side but with no clunking, clicking or anything like that. Like I said, there's no correct order. It's going to be different depending on your situation but I'm going to fit my controls onto the bars at this point just loosely so I can adjust them later. Now, when you look at the actual handlebar itself in the middle, you may or may not have a knurled finish on it. This one does, which means it's gonna give, have a bit more grip in the stem. However, it's still not a substitute for using a carbon gripper. This is a carbon bar and an alloy stem, so I would always use some kind of carbon compound. Now, I like to apply it to the bar rather than to the stem because I don't wanna accidentally get the stuff in the threads on the stem. Just a small amount on the clamping surfaces there, and then I'm gonna sit it in place and then we're just gonna rest the clamp in there and we're just gonna secure the bolts. Now, just before we do this, there's something else important to note. On the cradle or the front of the clamp that sits on the bars, have a look at your ones. It quite often says how many newton meters in torque that you need to apply, so it's five newton meters on these bolts. But more importantly, it also says no gap. So the top two bolts, you actually tighten these until it stops. 
and then you would adjust the tension or you adjust the torque on the bottom bolts. Now this does differ on certain stems, sometimes it's the other way around, sometimes it's full contact, sometimes there is no contact, which means you have to evenly go around and adjust the bolts. Make sure you don't just pick one bolt, crank it up tight and then the others, because that one will always end up slightly tighter. It needs to be very even in this process. And now is the time to decide on the angle that you want your bars at. So most bars have markings so you can line them up in the middle at the front and they also have markings on the top so you can see the angle there. Now it's completely up to you where you want to go. But it's quite useful to start with them at a zero or a centered mark if your bars have one. Then you can decide if you want to roll your bars forward slightly or roll them backwards towards you. But uh, starting with a neutral position is always going to be the best place. Okay, so I've got the bar roughly where I want for sort of a base setting there. I'm just going to put the last two Allen bolts in place. I'm going to loosely nip these up and then I'm going to get the torque wrench on here. So I want to make sure that this is definitely going to be nice and safe. Okay, so now it's time to make sure that all the bolts are safely and securely tightened. And when it comes to carbon bars, the only real way to do this is by using a torque wrench. Now you've got a few options, as I mentioned earlier with this. Uh, I'm not gonna be using the full size one, but if you do have access to something like this, uh, they're pretty simple to use. You literally twist the dial on the bottom and you've got a little window here, and that basically, uh, if your torque wrench is correctly calibrated, will give you a readout on what you're looking for. In this case, it's five newton meters, so I'll let you turn it so it sits between four and six, obviously, uh, five newton meters, and then you're good to go. And it will actually stop. It won't let you tighten anymore when you get to correct torque. However, as I mentioned, these little smaller compact units are really beneficial for bikers if you don't want to have a full tool set because of the fact that they're really good for using on your controls and the areas that are delicate. I'm just going to dial this into five newton meters on the top here. It's already got a four millimeter bit in here, so I can work away. Now you don't want to just go cranking up one bolt at a time. You want to, and then we're just going to do a turn on each one until they're until the tool stops me going any further. I'd imagine the next turn. Yep, there we go. And there we go. So I'm just going to check the top ones as well. And we know that that is safe to the manufacturer's spec. Uh, that's all you really need to do with a torque wrench. So we've got our bar mounted and we've got the stem mounted. Not to forget that the stem isn't clamped in place yet, it's just had the bearing adjusted. So technically the bar will still move. It's vital to check all of these bolts one more time before you ride the bike. Uh, and actually, as a general safety thing, you should be doing a bolt check on your bike, especially with some of the critical ones like your front wheel axle, your brake calipers and your controls. So if any of those come loose when you're riding, it's not going to end too well. Okay, now it's a case of getting the controls in the position we like. Now, I'm really familiar with my setup, so I know exactly where I want things. So I'm going to put my grips in place first, make sure I've got the bar end plugs in there. Always make sure you use bar end plugs because of the fact that essentially, if you have a bad crash and you end up uh, landing on that, it's a bit of a cookie cutter, like a core sample effect. And also, uh, other than the obvious safety thing, many people won't let you race or even ride at a bike park if you don't have bar end plugs. So make sure that you have some. Okay, so I'm gonna stand just looking over my bike here to get my grips in the position that I like. And now I'm just gonna secure those with the pinch bolts at the end. And then I'm gonna make sure I've got my controls exactly as I like them. Now, obviously this is a personal preference thing. This is where having measured or pre-measured where you had your existing controls beforehand comes in handy. But I know the exact place on mine. And just to be sure, I can measure the position. So four centimeters in and four centimeters in. Perfect, exactly where I like them. There's two schools of thought as well to add into this. Some people like to over tighten the brake levers so they can't move. I prefer to under tighten mine very slightly. And the reason for this, if, if I have a crash and I've got a carbon bar, the brake lever can still move, just a very slight amount. It will never move with how tight I have it under normal use, but it does mean if I hit a tree or whatever in a crash, it means there's far less chance of me actually breaking my brake lever, which I have had in the past. Now it's time to line up your stem with your front wheel. Now when you're doing this, make sure your bike is upright and make sure that you look from a few angles just to make sure you're not glaringly at the wrong angle when you do this. I've seen so many people have their stems slightly off. Yeah, it's quite a tricky thing, so just take your time with this. And that looks perfect to me from this angle. So I'm gonna go ahead now, just nip up those bolts, and then again use the torque wrench. 
just to make sure we're in a good place with those. Perfect. And there we go. Handlebars and stem correctly and safely and securely, more importantly, fitted to the bike. Like I said, there's not really any specialist tools, but a torque wrench is strongly recommended for this. One last thing to do on my bike is just to wipe off any excess uh, grease that's purged out from the bolts, from the threads on the stem there, and the same with the carbon assembly compound. And then uh, go and hit the trails and enjoy my new bars and stem. <laughs>